Normalize. That is, if I assume that the cage length is just that length minus epsilon, of course I cannot capture all my. So next slide. So yeah, I can define the function as max of x j minus x i comma y j minus y t. Yeah. No, your question said you should not capture all the. Right. So this is the minimum in which you can capture. So that minus epsilon for some one e minus nine or something will not capture all. Means the, this is the first solution where you can capture, right? So yes. So uh, this is the function. Is everyone does this look turn researchable to anyone? That is, this looks like a fairly complicated function. Why should this be turn researchable? Right. So okay, the observation that you must make is x i of t. That is, what will I be turn researching on? I'll be searching on t. I will not be searching on length, I will be searching on t. If it is binary search problems, you will be searching on the answer directly. If it is turn research problem, you will be searching on a parameter which leads to the answer. So, uh, uh, I am trying to turn research on t and what I have is xj of t minus xi of t. Now, what xi of t is, xi of t, let's say, which is position of mice, xi of t would be t x i or p x i plus t into v x i is everyone clear with this formula which is basic physics so this is a linear equation in t assuming that my variable is t what i have is a linear equation in t and x j of t is similarly a linear equation in t so x j of t minus x i of t is again a linear equation in t so what i have is a line there line line this is also a line assuming t is variable i am not saying a i'm not saying for a fixed t so i have one line i have another line here and i must find one max here and i must find another max because max is from here to here and then max goes up here and here so what makes this problem special is the fact that each of those lines that is if it is if it was a line segment you would not be defining a convex region because line segment can stop at any point what makes this problem special is that each point each line extends from t equal to zero that is you might you will not have breaks like this because you don't have breaks like this you are you are really working with a convex region as in please note that if it was a line segment case this might not have been convex but because it's a line it's convex so is everyone clear that max of these lines is convex? What I mean by, or in our terms is unimodal. Uh, a region, f uh, a region is called convex if uh, if you take any two points in the in the line in the region and if you join it, it will all the all the points in this line joining these two points is also in the region. This is just a, this is just another mathematical definition for a convex region convex function I have defined earlier which is based on line and the curve below that so yeah so this is how the graph looks like and and so you are working with a unimodal graph because you are working with a unimodal graph it's turn researchable so yeah next slide so yeah this uh, uh, another mathematical way of saying uh, defining this function into is this is piecewise linear a piecewise linear function is so that is a function like this where it is uh, where it is made of lines and and then uh, at at all the intersection points the slope changes mm, is is the diagram clear all right Next slide. yes y axis divides y axis defines uh, at t equal to 0 at t equal to 0 what what is the y axis uh, defines f of t I define my f of t as that is no what y axis defines is not f of t what y axis defines is uh, assume that what is the point at which these two mice meet that is x i minus uh, that is for each pair I have two two equations one is that is for each pair i comma j I write two equations which is x i x i of t minus x j of t and y a of t minus y j of t both of which are lines so why so each line defines what is the difference between i comma j for some i comma j that is l l k is is actually defining a pair i j and either it's x or y coordinate it's difference between x or y coordinate at time t 
that is if I have a line k what it defines is what the difference between either its x let's say let's say similarity it's x coordinate what it defines is what is the difference between x coordinates of mice i and j with uh, when t changes that is what this line defines that is and similarly y defines the same thing my f of t is not y axis what f of t is it is the uh, uh, my f of t is the max of all the lines at each given interval t now we go on to a technique called as iterative methods iterative methods are a bit shady in the sense that you really don't have a proof when an iterative method works and when an iterative method does not work like uh, of course uh, the first example is newton raphson which i think most of you would have learned in your numerical numerical methods class but let's say i am given a problem in which i am asked to find something an iterative method would essentially look like this that is let's say i define a function f i define a function f is equal f i is equal to f of i1 plus f of i2 plus up to f of i k plus c something like this uh, what i do in an iterative method is i just initially randomly assign value for each of that is i i randomly assign value for each of f of i j i i randomly assign is equal to some random value and then i recompute this the recompute f based on the definition that is i i compute like I, I just said f1 equal to 3 f2 equal to f1 equal to 3 f2 equal to 4 f3 equal to 5 or something and then i recompute and let's say the equation is f1 equal to f2 plus f3 f2 equal to something f3 plus f3 minus f1 or something of the sort i recompute what the new value of f3 would be assuming this is correct so I'll get a new value of f1, f2, f3. I again go, I again compute what the new value of f would be assuming that the current value is correct. So what I'm essentially doing is that I iterate until I, I get, I reach a value such that it does not, it does not change after that. That is, if there is, exists a solution, then of course, if I substitute it here, it would again give me the same solution. That is, let, let's say that, mm, this has a solution which let's just say that this has a solution x y z then of course z, z equal to x plus y would hold if that is a solution this will also hold so then once i reach a solution then consecutive iterations would not change the values of f so iterative method essentially tries to find convergence in the values of f uh, means just to get uh, uh, intuition you could pro that is for those who have had, had a class there are methods like gauss seidel and gauss jordan which are essentially iterative methods that, to solve linear equations so uh, it means it's just you could probably look that up all of those who have not had a class you could probably just look that up so it's an example of an iterative method so yeah we'll get back to our problem which is uh, newton raphson yeah the idea with iterative methods is you do not know when to go for an iterative method or when to look uh, for something else now gauss seidel or gauss jordan is an iterative method to solve linear equations linear equations can of course be solved with something called as gaussian relation which i suppose all of you know that is you just write a matrix and then uh, you write it in so newton raphson method is you are given a function f and you must find better approximations to its root so let's say uh, uh, all of you know Horner's okay uh, assume you are given a polynomial how would you evaluate that polynomial at a point let's say I am given a polynomial let's say I am given a polynomial f of x equal to uh, c1 x power n plus c2 x power n minus 1 plus up to c n plus 1 plus up to c n plus 1 so how will i evaluate this polynomial can anyone give me a reason let's say i must find the value of but i'm given the values of c i's i'm given an array c bracket n plus 1 which is the values of c i's and i'm also given the x at which i must compute this polynomial so uh, what he says is what is called as Horner's rule which is actually a very handy rule when you have to evaluate polynomial if you were to do it using powering so it, it this would have taken n steps or and this would have taken n minus one step so it would be theta n squared and if you are using log n powering it would it would still be theta n log n uh, but instead of that if you use something called as Horner's rule you can do this in linear time that is in theta n 
so uh, so given a polynomial you should know how, means that is you, you can probably look up Horner's rule it's a fairly simple uh, technique so given a polynomial you should know how to evaluate it in reasonably quick time so now I'm given a polynomial f and I'm, I must find a root of the polynomial so what Newton Raphson method does is it does it takes a it's a, it takes a random value for x that, and then it computes new value based on the old value xn equal to xn xn plus 1 equal to xn minus fxn by f dash xn f dash being the derivative of f so note the issues with this problem that is what happens is let's say this is f let's say this is my function uh, what this tries to find is uh, I chase my this would be the derivative of f at, at point x can everyone, everyone see this graph derivative of f at point x so what it does is it it says that you can try searching from this point so in the next iteration I'll be searching like this that is I'll be taking the derivative like this going further means until uh, I reach a point where the derivatives are fa where I either get the root or there will be no root but then again there are a few, few problems with this method which is f dash could turn 0 that is if it is close to 0 like if because of some unfortunate reason my uh, so if it's something like this and if I'm here and if f dash is close to zero it, it might overshoot the solution that is you're having a division by uh, zero in the denominator so it might overshoot the solution so uh, this is an example for an iterative method uh, which you can use to solve roots of equations I think you might uh, in case you are given a polynomial so why Newton Raphson? That is, some important things about Newton Raphson is the convergence is quadratic. That is, let's say I'm at uh, at a given x and the error between x and the solution is, let's say k. The next time k is less than one, uh, the next time the error would be k squared, uh, more less than k squared. That is, the convergence is quadratic. It converges really quick. If unless you hit with some case like this, it converges really quick. But the negatives are it requires derivative calculation and it's unsuitable when the denominator is zero or tens close to zero. So, okay, uh, I will be covering probability and expectations when I'll get back to iterative methods. Iterative methods are typically used for expectation problems or probability problems. So, how can you, you know, have an intuitive idea that, okay, I need not go for Gaussian elimination or some dynamic programming solution. I can do an iterative method. This, the number of steps is finite. Let's say I'm, I'm talking about a game. Let's say I'm talking about some game played between 10 people. Uh, I'll be discussing this further there, but just to have continuity, I'll just, just give the basic idea and then I'll continue this method on iterative method, or this discussion on iterative method after I complete probability. So I, let's say I'm computing, I'm playing a game. N people are playing a game, and I and I have some relations like f of i is this, f of i person is this plus this plus this, for p of i into some some relation like that. Then, if the game completes, if the expected number of steps that the game takes is small, let's say. Uh, the probability of the game extending beyond 100 steps is fairly low. I can probably iterate, uh, iterate for 10,000 times and get a solution which is very, very valid. I, I am not sure of how much sense this makes. But that is, uh, we will be having probability lecture later when I will be covering this further. But for uh, means when to use iterative method, the rule of thumb is when the expectation on the number of rounds of your system is low. Uh, yeah, next slide. All right. So this uh, another technique which is at fairly advanced and which is which is probably used. I think it is there in this World Finals too. Is meet in the middle. It's again not uh, not you. It typically appears in hard problems as a subroutine in hard problems. It was discovered by it was it is not a technique. It's as such it was discovered by Horowitz and Sani in 1974. It is an optimization which has which removes a complexity term two power x and converts it into a complexity term 2 power x by 2. Now, to have a basic idea of how big an optimization this is, if n equal to 40, 2 power x would take around 10,000 seconds. And uh, if n equal to 20, it would take around 1 second. That is, if so by some optimization, if I can reduce an n equal to 40 problem uh, uh, using meet in the middle, I'd be reducing its time complexity uh, in a very drastic manner. 
So we'll uh, we'll just look at a very basic.